Hello everybody, uh, Jason Lewis, Professional Combat Colorist here. This is the first in what I hope to be a weekly or possibly bi-weekly series of uh, me coloring pinups for my various uh, comic buddies. The first one here is a uh, Batman drawn by a really talented up-and-coming uh, penciler named Jacob Egger. Um, I'll put both of our Twitter handles in the description. Let's get started. Uh, this is the uh, black and white line art, pretty much how uh, Jacob gave it to me. And I'll show you my flats real quick. Yeah, I flat this before I started the recording. I really love Jacob's artwork. Uh, a lot of really bold, clean lines. Uh, lots of spotted blacks. Now, personally, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of like uh, heavy spotted blacks because I find that it uh, kind of interferes a lot of times with like the light and shadows I'm gonna do. But I think uh, Jacob does it really well. One of the first things I do when I get a piece like this is I get rid of that stark white background. So I just fill it with like a 20% you know, gray. And then I'll add in the border. I usually like to do an interesting border. When you get it printed at like, you know, somewhere like Office Max or Staples, uh, usually uh, they can't print to the side. So it makes, it's, it makes it a little more interesting because you're going to deal with a little white border anyways. Might as well uh, make it work to your advantage. It's like why I do these little vignettes when I do uh, prints for conventions. So after I've got it at this stage, I like to just fill it with a solid color. I'm just going to go with a straight purple. The swatches there, I, I kind of used to use back in the day when I did... Um, remastered old comics from Marvel. So yeah, I'm just putting out a color of purple, just kind of a plan of attack. Just, you know, it's night. Uh, I'm going to make it kind of purplish. So yeah, like I, you know, I, I rarely use any kind of palette whatsoever. So, you know, I'm always kind of constantly readjusting my colors. So here I'm kind of making it a bit more, uh, more bluish, you know, for night. So once I kind of got that overall theme down, I'm going to mess with the buildings. Usually when you see buildings at night, they're kind of like an incandescent kind of burnt orange color. So I'm going to do that to kind of contrast with uh, the purple night. So that's, you know, pretty much, you know, I got purple sky, orange buildings. Yeah, you can kind of see how different that is uh, when the purple is taken away. I had this moon element because when I was flatting it, I was planning on doing a night scene since it's Batman. Um, it could have made a day scene, but with all the heavy inks on the, the buildings, I was going to go for night. I mean, plus it's Batman. Now, Batman is typically kind of villain colors, like he's a gray with some blue and a little bit of yellow. Uh, most uh, heroes you see are kind of like in the red and blue stage. Uh, it makes them kind of stand out from the comic page more. You know, they're kind of patriotic, bold colors. But Batman, you know, he's always had kind of like a gray and kind of purplish blue kind of vibe to him. Uh, so that's uh, one thing, like if you put him against these kind of burnt orange incandescent like night scenes, that really makes them pop. So again, I'm just kind of like putting in basic colors here. I'm just kind of, you know, grayish bodysuit, uh, you know, kind of bluish cape, you know, kind of going a little uh, Dark Knight Adam West style. Uh, you know, giving a little bit of skin tone. I mean, uh, Batman, you know, he's kind of, he doesn't really get out during the day a lot, so I make him a little pale. Give him that white iris that uh, comic uh, characters like always have. It looks crazy when you see it like in, someone trying to attempt it like in cosplay, but, you know, in comic characters it looks cool. So yeah, here I am. I'm just kind of got all my basic plan of attack down. You know, I got my, my sky, got my moon, got, you know, Batman. So now I'm going to go through and uh, start with the sky, do a little bit of rendering on the sky. Um, you know, like I'm kind of showing, like I locked down, like I put a, when I'm working on a something, an element, I put it on its own layer and I kind of lock it down. So, you know, I can't really color outside whatever I'm doing. So right now I'm just kind of putting like a haze, you know, from the lights coming up from the buildings. Uh, again, just kind of a general plan of attack. You know, I've got kind of an orangish kind of vibe going with the buildings, so I can't really put orange in on top of purple without having it really gray out. So you you got to kind of meet in the middle. I'm zooming in here because, um, like, I use all my brushes almost exclusively in dissolve mode. So I'm just picking up uh, that orange and messing with it. Uh, that's one of the advantages of dissolve mode. If I was using like normal mode there'd be a thousand different gradations between that kind of reddish color and the purple, but the big advantage to using dissolve mode is it blends optically, not physically, so you have only got those two colors. Uh, dissolve mode is kind of like the comic sans of Photoshop. When you tell people you color in dissolve mode, they treat you like you're insane, but uh, I find it has like a lot of advantages to it, which is why I do it, but at first, like when you first start using everything dissolve mode, like it just looks like crap, so it takes a little while to kind of figure that out. Here I'm using a custom brush uh, to kind of put some stars in. I use uh, Kyle Webster brushes almost exclusively. If you have a Creative Cloud, uh, they're available free now. But you know, I bought all mine because I'm still using a Photoshop uh, CS5. I'm, you know, using some dark age technology here. 
So yeah, I'm just putting in some, you know, kind of little starbursts. Going a little bit crazier with the night sky, then, you know, it would be more realistic, but... One of the reasons we love comics is they're heightened reality, so... I mean, you know, you want to... First rule of art is to make something looks cool. Everything else is secondary. And I find the main advantage of digital art is being able to constantly kind of noodle, go back and forth, you know, undo, redo things. Uh, that's one thing, like, I get arguments with other people, whether, you know, comic art or digital art is, you know, legitimate. You know, it's like, well, you know, everything's a medium. I mean, it's just easier to correct mistakes on uh, my chosen medium of digital. So, yeah, so I'm just going back and forth here, you know, just kind of constantly, you know, trying to see what works, what doesn't. You know, when you create a plan of attack here, like kind of like I did, I mean, again, that's just your initial idea. Once you start actually working on a page, you know, you figured out, you know, maybe your initial idea wasn't that great. So, like, you know, I was really uh, going for this burnt orange color, but now that I've kind of, you know, started to work on the piece a little bit, you know, I'm kind of moving more towards a kind of magenta-ish red. Uh, added in some buildings here, kind of, you know, trying to make the buildings uh, separate and pop a little bit. It's one thing, like, uh, if you uh, look at the night sky, uh, it's always slightly lighter than the horizon. It's one of those things I always see, like, amateur colors mess up. So, yeah, whatever is hitting that horizon line is always going to be darker than, like, the sky behind it. So i got to put those buildings in dark, but, you know, since they're right next to some buildings that are completely black, can't make them too dark. So now I'm just going to go through and uh, just kind of, you know, take the individual buildings and kind of, like, adjust them. You know, and then give them a little bit of character, but, you know, not make them just, you know, one wall of solid color. That's the thing. With all these uh, solid blacks that Jacob put in, you know, I don't really have to do too much rendering. I could pretty much leave them flat. Uh, like, when you're doing a comic page, usually, like, you want to start with, like, whatever the most important thing in the panel is. You know, and this would be Batman. Yeah, you want to spend the, the majority of your time, you know, rendering uh, the most important aspect. Usually it's a uh, whatever face or faces. Uh, that's the thing that people look at the most and they kind of uh, project the most and empathize and scrutinize the most is uh, the human face. So that's, you know, where you want to spend the most time rendering and uh, learning how to render. I mean, you can screw up literally everything else, but as long as you get the face right, you know. Yeah, as long as you get the face right, you're golden most of the time. So here I'm just kind of showing uh, kind of where the two light sources are coming from. The strongest light sources will be uh, coming from the moon. If you look at the inks, uh, Jacob's already kind of put like a rim light in the cowl. And the secondary light source, which is going to give most of the, the form to Batman, is kind of coming uh, kind of from the bottom. It's going to be you know, some of that incandescent light from the buildings. So one thing uh, I see uh, amateur colors screw up the most is that they, uh, they kind of over, they overdo like the light sources. Normally, you, know, you kind of want to just work on one light source and put in you know, another light source only if it helps you kind of render out the forms. Uh, you know, this being a pinup, you know, I'm kind of going a little bit more crazy than I would on a normal comic panel. But you get too many light sources, and all of a sudden nothing has form, and everything's competing, and it just doesn't work right. A good rule of thumb is, like, you've got one light source, and if you have a secondary light source, it's going to be about 50% of uh, that first light source. But here I'm going to do that strong rim light from the moons, and that's going to be really bright. And then, you know, I'm going to have uh, somewhat less of a bright light coming up from the bottom just to kind of give his, you know, gray parts of his uh, suit, you know, kind of some more form. Uh, again, you know, Jacob already put that in the inks, so you want to, you know, work with the inks as much as possible. Sometimes, like, what works as a black and white ink drawing doesn't really work as a rendered color drawing, so you got to kind of get a happy medium between the two. Like, if you fight the inks, you're always going to lose, so sometimes you just kind of got to flub uh, the original art to kind of get it to work. Like, you'll see stuff where there'll be, like, you know, heavy shadows, but then, like, you'll look at the face, and, um, the nose will have a shadow going uh, quickly the wrong way. Usually that's where I go. Like, I look at the face, and then I see, like, if, uh, nine times out of ten, like, the pencilers put, like, a shadow on the nose, so that's usually an indication of where the light is, so I kind of got every, all the light sources kind of work with that. Uh, but right here, though, I mean, like I said, like, we pretty much just got to worry about Batman. I'm just going to keep the, the buildings kind of flat. Because, you know, when, when it comes down to it, like, you've got to create a sense of realism. You know, you want people to feel like they live, you know, within this world and whatnot. But at the same time, it's like, you know, if you're spending all your time rendering out, you know, background elements, it's just not a good use of your time. You want to do just enough where it's, you know, a believable space and a believable world, but not enough where it distracts from, like, uh, the action and the characters. 
So yeah, I'm just kind of going through these buildings, kind of, you know, just give, make them slightly different than each other, just so that, you know, again, looks more like a believable space. Because that's one of the things, like, you know, people love about comics. I mean, they, they, there's a world that they want to live in. You know, even though, like, kind of like Alan Moore said, even though there's, like, you know, insane murderous clowns and supervillains and rampaging aliens and mutant registration acts, I mean, you'd much rather live in pretty much any comic world than, you know, the world that we currently live in. So yeah, I mean, you definitely want to, you know, you want to make Gotham, you know, kind of look like a cool, believable space, you know. So yeah, like, now that I've rented out the buildings, I'm kind of messing with the sky a little bit, you know, doing more of that back and forth. Again, it, that's a constant struggle. It's like, um, you know, up until, like, the last, you know, maybe, you know, 1% or so of, like, you know, completing a, a piece of, you know, artwork like this. I'm constantly going back and forth and, you know, trying to get everything to work. So that's another thing, like, I see kind of amateur colors do. It's like they've got this, like, idea in their head that, like, a, a master colors puts down, like, you know, one color and never changes it because, you know, he's such a genius. But most, uh, most artists, you know, are constantly kind of, you know, kind of going back and forth and fixing little things. It's just like, you know, kind of every time I do a piece of art, it seems like the first, you know, like 80% of me doing it is me just, like, making horrible mistakes and trying to, like, you know, work my way out of them and make them work. So here I'm going to start doing some rendering on Batman. I've kind of got this, you know, this bluish gray down. And I'm not really worrying too much about the uh, the color of the shadows right now. I'm just kind of going through with like a, you know, kind of a little bit darker tone and just trying to get the, trying to get the forms. Like you see a lot, like uh, I'll demonstrate in a second here with the leg. But you kind of see a lot of people do this, for, like when they're rendering, I guess more amateur people, where they just, you know, trace the outline of a form. And that's not how things work. I mean, with the volumes of the you know, human body or really anything, I mean, light's hitting it in different ways, and you know, there's all these kind of different shapes and, you know, different volumes on the human body. So right now I'm just kind of going through, and I'm kind of just seeing what works, what doesn't. Um, you know, again, you know, I've been doing this for a while, so, I mean, you get used to, like, you know, you know pretty much the muscles of the body and the shapes and kind of how light, you know, will hit it. But like I said, the first rule of a... Uh, art is always making something looks cool and you know if you're making something that's accurate but it looks kind of weird or lame you know it's usually a usually a bad idea again I'm gonna leave most of them in shadow here uh, a mentor of mine kind of gave me this uh, advice once that I always think of it's like he said a form should either be one-third or two-thirds in shadow because anything else uh, you know isn't very dynamic so that's always kind of what I think of when I'm like shading a form you know I'm just using that rule of thirds is what he used to call it. So right now I'm just kind of going through picking out forms and shading it. You know, I'm going to be using that, you know, really a bright rim light, so I'm going to keep most of them in, in this dark shadow and, you know, but but again, you know, I don't want to be too flat, so I'm using uh, that light coming from like the, the bottom left there to kind of give him some more form and, you know, not going too crazy here, just, you know, picking out a couple of wrinkles, picking out a couple of muscle structures. Uh, you know, just trying to keep it simple. Like I said, Jacob, he's got a very kind of clean, simple style, so if I over-render Batman, it's just going to look bad. If I start, you know, putting in, like, you know, over-defining muscles or start putting in a bunch of wrinkles that aren't there. So, you know, again, you know, sometimes, you know, you know, like when you start working in comics, you, know, you kind of almost feel like you're going to get in trouble if you're not, you know, doing a bunch of crazy rendering or, you know, it looks like you're doing too simple an approach, but sometimes, you know, the most simple approach is the best approach. Like, uh, again, like I said earlier, like, you know, I'm not a, uh, like, I, artistically, I would prefer, you know, kind of working on stuff that's been more open, doesn't have so much solid black, because then I can interpret light sources and kind of, you know, as I see fit. But, uh, again, like, there's some advantages to it. Like, if you're working with someone who uses really heavy blacks, like, sometimes you can almost get away with doing, like, flat colors. It just saves you a ton of time. But, yeah, you, you always kind of feel like kind of a weird fraud doing it. You know, you're just always afraid to want to get in trouble, you know, like you're not earning your, your paycheck, but, or not putting your, you know, artistic stamp on it, but a lot of times, you know, like simpler is better. Actually, I would say most of the time simpler is better, you know. Only add, you know, stuff to the point where, like, uh, it's helping if you start getting diminishing returns by adding a bunch of, uh, you know, a crazy rendering or shading where it doesn't need to go. I mean, you're really not doing anyone any good. You know, your pencil is not going to be happy with you, your editor is not going to be happy with you. So, like, uh, I recorded this uh, previously, but uh, realized it was, like, way too long for a YouTube video, so I'm kind of doing my narration. 
kind of after the fact. So one of the things I was doing here is I was kind of going back and forth and just kind of seeing what works. Like that one leg, uh, his left leg uh, on our right there, like I had a, you know, I kept going back and forth on it, you know, trying to figure out what the, uh, the right amount of shading is. Eventually I get it, but you know, in the meantime, I'm just kind of seeing what looks good, what doesn't. Uh, when I'm working, I'm constantly zooming out. Like I'll zoom in, you know, kind of tight to like work on something. When I'll zoom out, you know, pretty far to see how it looks. And I think that's a good um, test to see what you're if you're doing works or not. Like if you zoom out, you know, because uh, like it's one of those things. Like with a computer, you can zoom in and do all this, you know, really intricate detailing, but a lot of it gets lost in print. And it's just you know, people looking at stuff like online on their phones. I mean, you know, you're just wasting your time doing a lot of like really intricate stuff. So I'm always zooming out. You're just kind of looking at it, see if it over works overall, kind of in the macro sense. You know, then you know, I'm zooming in and kind of modifying it. If I had to describe my method, I always call it the uh, two-cut method. Uh, whether I'm doing, you know, something like this, which is almost cell shaded, or something that's kind of a little bit more uh, elaborate and and like more rendered and painted, I pretty much, you know, have the same approach. What I do is I put down basically like a big form shadow kind of getting my basic shapes down then I uh, do like a darker core shadow now sometimes like this like you know, I'm almost like tracing uh, you know the same forms already made you know using like the uh, form shadows more of like a transitional color and yeah the transitional color like you know, adds a lot of like uh, kind of information and depth uh, like this you know he's basically just wearing a gray jumpsuit so the transitional color like isn't you know, crazy different, but a lot of times if I'm doing like skin tones, like all that, like uh, form shadow, like I'll have like kind of like more of a kind of like a bright, you know, kind of reddish color, give it kind of the skin a little bit more life to it, you know, kind of look like there's blood underneath. But usually, like, what you want to do with shadows is like uh, if you have, you know, a warm light source, you know, kind of under normal lighting, and you want to have your shadows kind of shift to be a bit cooler, and or if you know, you have kind of like a cold light source, you know, do the opposite. Well, that's kind of basically, uh, how shadows work. I mean, majority of the time, like you're looking at something under kind of like a yellow or yellowish kind of orange light. So typically, like your shadows are tend to be kind of a muted kind of purplish or bluish color. Uh, and again, you know, it's like it's all relative. You know, what's a kind of like a you know a shadow wise, like what's kind of like a warm you know kind of blue is you know a cold green, that kind of thing. So. So yeah, like I've shifted like uh, his, you know, the parts of his body are kind of like, or his body suit are kind of like a cold grayish, so his uh, you know, core shadow there is kind of like a warmish kind of like uh, purple. So yeah, like right here I'm going back trying to get that leg and, you know, I'm just, I'm just not getting it. Um, I'll, I'll get it eventually, don't worry. Stay tuned. And if you haven't already, um, you know, like and subscribe. Uh, like I said, I'm hoping to do these on a weekly basis and, uh, you know, I'm, I got some other things kind of planned, like I'm looking at maybe uh, doing a, it's kind of a test run for doing like a series of instructional videos I might sell online, so I'm kind of seeing how this works, kind of seeing, you know, what kind of interest there is. Um, you know, I'd be coloring a comic page and going like uh, pretty in-depth, you know, kind of giving a play-by-play, -play, talking about it, kind of breaking it down in the, you know, in the various ways, like you start a page, starting with flatting and going all the way up to effects, but uh, as you saw just a few seconds ago, like I was trying to do some you know, more elaborate rendering with some of the muscles and it just kind of looked bad so I took it out and now I'm kind of putting in that rim light and once I hit that rim light like it really starts to take form and you know kind of look neat see so, yeah, I'm just kind of going through you know with the rim light I'm trying to keep it very simple you know just not you know do go too crazy it's just kind of hitting that edge of them so you know kind of going through uh, you know kind of sample a little bit of that light from like the, the color of the moon but you know against uh, Batman it looks almost white that's the thing though, it's like a color is only as good as a color right beside it, so what looks like, you know, kind of like a, you know, like a dingy green against uh, that white border looks uh, almost bright white against, you know, his kind of like darker, kind of bluish gray suit. So I'm just kind of going through trying to get the shapes down. Uh, it's going, you know, lots of back and forth, lots of just kind of experimenting. Uh, again, you know, it's like, you, know, you do this for a while and you kind of know what works and what doesn't work, and, uh, you know, you kind of have your anatomy and your perspective, and you know kind of how forms and shadows work, but a lot of it's just, you know, what looks cool. And like I said about art, I mean, like, you know, if you make it look cool, you're you're 90% there. I mean, yeah, you know, it's like you want to have maybe a political message or you want to, you know, show some, like, experimentation with form and whatnot, but if it doesn't look cool, like, you fail. So that's always priority number one. It's like people give uh, Rob Leafield a lot of crap, but he is the king of making stuff looks cool. 
and again, you know, I don't know the guy, you know, I'm not going to, you know, please don't, you know, I don't want to comment about, you know, all the, you know, sins of Rob Leafield. Like, yeah, I've seen those, you know, those Tumblr posts too, and yeah, they're funny, but really, like, when you think about it, I mean, there's a reason why he's a millionaire. It's because he makes things look cool, and he doesn't sweat uh, anything else. So, yeah, here's what I'm doing, you know, making Batman look cool, kind of working on uh, getting those uh, rim, that rim light to work for the moon. So yeah, it's going to be hitting his, you know, his left side pretty hard, but, you know, just slightly hitting that right side, you know, so it's, uh, another thing I see a mistake that I see, like, amateur colors do is, like, every form gets, like, the, the same amount of light, and that's just kind of not how forms and light work, so yeah, I mean, farther away from the light source is, uh, the less light you're going to get, and again, here it's, you know, you're kind of splitting hairs, because, you know, he's, you know, thousands of miles away from the moon, but, it's going to hit that one side a lot harder than it's going to hit the other side. But I want to leave that, you know, rim light on his right side just to kind of, you know, give it a little bit more forms. This is that, that flat kind of gray color. And here I'm doing another transitional color. I'm, you know, working on some, using that, some of that green from the moon, kind of making it more yellow. Because that really makes it, really, really makes it pop instead of just using that, like, flat kind of, like, you know, whitish color. It's kind of like if you see, like, you know, in Star Wars, you see, like, a lightsaber. It's like it's basically a big white, you know, tube with like uh, some color around the edges, but it looks like it's a really, you know, electric kind of burning color because of that. So yeah, here I am just kind of putting that like transitional kind of like yellowish color to kind of make that that uh, rim light seem a lot hotter. So I'm just kind of going through. And again, you know, I'm kind of sometimes like with the, the dissolve, um, using stuff in dissolve mode, I can just select that rim light I did and just paint within it, you know, kind of like I did there. Sometimes I want to paint like on the edge of it to kind of define the edge. So yeah, you know, got Batman there. I think his, uh, I think his body is looking pretty good. I'm gonna go start rendering out the face. Now, like I said earlier, usually you want to spend the most time rendering a face, uh, but here it's like there isn't really too much to it. Like if you're doing Batman, especially, majority of his face is going to be you know kind of black except for uh, kind of like his mouth and <coughs> excuse me chin area. So I'm kind of going through here and, you know, kind of hitting it. I know I'm going to be hitting it with that rim light, so, I mean, I don't, I'm not doing too much uh, crazy rendering on a face. It's kind of, you know, getting it a little bit form, you know, kind of showing that there's a little bit of space between it and the mask. And I'm going through, you know. Again, I'm kind of just seeing like, how much I want to define of, like, a, you know, that heavy black line right there. Which, uh, you know, it's one of those things, again, that line, you know, looks really good as a black and white piece. But, you know, when I start rendering it, that line kind of sticks out a lot, so... Here I am kind of going through with the rim light, kind of trying to pick out, make the, you know, define the form a little bit more. But, you know, with his face there, it's like, you know, it's, uh, if you look at his head like that, that light's just kind of barely hitting it. So, you know, initially I was kind of doing a bit too thick of a, thick of a line there, but, you know, again, you know, bear with me, I'll get it. So again, just kind of going through, kind of, you know, zooming out, kind of seeing how it works with the rest of the body. With a strong rim light like this, I'm basically using the same color over all the different forms. Like normally, I'd be you know, kind of like changing up the light. You know, you wouldn't have such a strong highlight like you know, on his face. So, you know, that the highlight on his face you know be more in tune with the skin tone. You know, kind of like a highlight on the gray parts of his body be you know kind of a variation of that. But yeah, when you're getting hit with a strong light like that, it's kind of blasting things out. Like I tend to just use the same color. So yeah, now I'm going into his cape a bit. Uh, his cape, you know, is mostly black with just a little bit of a uh, highlight to kind of show form. So, I mean, a lot of it's going to be blasted out by, like, that uh, strong highlight color. So I'm just kind of filling it in. Uh, but other parts, I'm going to, you know, kind of have that blue in there. And, like, uh, when Jacob originally drew this, I mean, he wasn't really thinking about me coloring it. So, like, he had that white background there. And as such, like, he left a lot of the, the black shadows, you know, on the cape and the cowl and stuff. Just so it wouldn't, you know, blend in with the white background. But now that I've got kind of a color background, I'm going to have to go through and kind of modify the line work a little bit. You know, put a little more highlight in there for that strong rim light. Because like you see the ears on the top of the cape, I mean, there would be a rim light on that, which you know, he didn't draw in. So kind of going through and just kind of, you know, kind of spreading out the rim light a little bit to that, like, uh, right side over there. Since I got the highlight on the arm and, like, the uh, glove, I mean, you know, i got to put some on the cape too. So I'm kind of just trying to figure out how much to put in, you know. Because, again, you don't want to overpower it. You want to make it seem like it's hitting that one side of him, like, way more than it's hitting, like, uh, his right side. Again, lots of back and forth. Just kind of see what works. And, you know, if it doesn't work, you know, just going back through the history and uh, trying it again. So, yeah, like, you know, once I start that hitting that rim light in there, it's like all of a sudden, like, you know, it's like a shadow like, gets kind of uh, washed out. So, 
kind of going through and modifying his uh, the you know great parts again, trying to get more uh, a little more contrast, a little more dynamicism. And usually when you're working on a night scene, like you know you're not going to have nearly as much contrast between like your midtone and your shadows as you would like uh, in daylight. Usually like night colors tend to flatten everything out. But yeah, with that strong rim light, you know I want to make sure you know it's uh, is you know is a uh, bodysuit doesn't flatten out, so you know, it kind of deepens colors a bit. Now I'm going through his like pouch belt. Uh, these pouches, uh, I'm not sure what they are. I mean, you know, the kind of 70s Batman had kind of little metal capsules, but modern Batman has kind of almost like, you know, like gray, like strong cloth material that he uses. So uh, he just, you know, Jacob just kind of drew squares in there, so I think he's kind of just, you know, leaving it up to the reader to interpret. So I'm just going to give him a little bit of uh, depth without, you know, defining him too much. I gave him a little bit more of a kind of like a wobbly kind of highlight to kind of maybe imply that they're made of metal, but. You know, for the most part, I'm just gonna, you know, kind of render them just a little bit and not, you know, not worry about them too much. And again, like, you know, they're hitting uh, that, like, uh, his left side pretty hard and kind of, you know, floating around a little bit, but I don't want him to, you know, I don't want him to go too far. So, yeah, just kind of a little bit, you know, just a little bit of, a uh, little bit on the edge there, just kind of show that there's some form and depth, but, you know, they're not, uh, they're pretty shallow. You know, they don't, they don't protrude so much. Yeah, you know, so again, I'm liking how it's turned out here. I probably got to work on the buildings a little bit more. Uh, like I said, like I had previously recorded this, and I'm kind of doing like uh, the narration uh, the next day. So uh, yeah, I'm going to start hitting the moon here. Again, like I'm just going to hit more of like a soft airbrush effect on the moon. I'm not going to, you know, render it out with like uh, the cut style that I did Batman. Uh, typically, like that's kind of how I, I do backgrounds. A lot of times on the backgrounds, I use a very soft rendering. Uh, just because, you know, it's like if I'm using too much detail, too much contrast, too much detail in the backgrounds, like, they tend to distract from, like, the, uh, the main characters for the most part, so, kind of just going through and making a new moon kind of like a greenish gray, uh, you know, again, but, I, like, I, I designed this so, like, the moon kind of like it, you know, the, the negative shape of the moon kind of breaks in, you know, and kind of like, uh, breaks up the, uh, the sky and kind of like bleeds into the border, so, you know, I don't want there to be, like, these harsh edges, so it takes a little bit to kind of, get the shape right, and uh, again, like you can see when I zoom in, like, you know, what, what the dissolve mode kind of looks like when it's, uh, you know, when it's zoomed in pretty far, but usually when it prints, I mean, you can almost, you know, not tell that there's, uh, you know, it's in dissolve mode, and it looks pretty much like a normal, normal mode, you know, blends in, blends together really well. See, so, yeah, I'm going through my list of brushes here, uh, I tend to use maybe, like, I tend to use, like, one brush, uh, almost, you know, it's, you know, 90% of the time when I'm working on something, I've got like one brush I use pretty much the entire time. And I've got that kind of like, uh, like really soft brush that I use a lot. But then like, uh, I think I have maybe like 10 brushes I use on any regular basis. But, you know, I've got, you know, several hundred that I've modified to work in a dissolve mode. So a lot of times I've been doing some texture like this, you know, I'm going through and just kind of seeing what works. Uh, I don't know how Kyle has his uh, brushes set up now, but it, I mainly use brushes from his, like, mega set, and then, like, there's another set that's uh, a splatter set that he made that I, you know, use a lot for textures. Uh, the brush I use most for this uh, kind of, you know, cell shaded is uh, called Badass. If you ever see me use it, you know, I, I kind of started using it because of, of the name, but then I found out I really liked it, kind of like the pointed, kind of like rough edges to it. So yeah, so I'm going through here, I'm just kind of like trying to make that, you know, that texture kind of like not too contrasty, but like, you know, but I don't want you to lose it, so I'm just kind of going through and just kind of giving me a hint of a kind of a rocky texture to moon and then putting in a little bit of a uh, secondary light there so that it gives like the, it gives the uh, moon like kind of like a round shape. So now I'm going to go in back into the sky and just add a little bit like, you know, kind of like a haze, you know, kind of like almost like there's a little atmosphere. Because that usually makes, uh, you know, celestial bodies kind of look a bit more like they're in space and not, you know, so much like they're, you know, just flat against the sky. So, now I just use an action real quick. Usually when I work, I've got the uh, lines and the, the channels, and I have, like, a, a separate layer that I use for my flats, and I have, like, a background layer that's where all my painting is, and then usually, like, I have whatever I'm working on at the moment on its own layer, but... uh that's it. Usually it's like, you know, I've got like three layers going at one time, but when I'm, I'm almost done, I go through and I, you know, I put in a holds layer and I put in a glows layer and a line art layer and I just start modifying it. Like a lot of times on pinups like this, I'll uh, go through into the, um, 
the actual like line art and like make it not so black. Like the traditional uh, comic black is like 100% K, 60% cyan, 40% magenta, 40% yellow. But a lot of times with like you know a pinup like this, I'll go through and um you know kind of like add a little bit of color to the blacks. You know I kind of like the look of it, kind of harmonizes the piece a bit. I don't really do it as much for like the printed page. Sometimes like depending on what I'm working on, maybe I'll go through the pages and kind of you know add like a little bit of color to it. Uh, you know, just keep, you know, make it a little bit less, you know, comic booky, for lack of a better term. So right now I'm going through on the holds layer and I'm painting on top of the lines, just adding a bit more of, um, you know, that hard rim light. Because like I said, you know, when he was, you know, when Jacob was drawing this, he wasn't really thinking of like me doing a bunch of my, uh, you know, just molesting it with my colors basically. So you know, I had to add in some stuff. And again, you know, like, it depends on your penciler. Sometimes you'll, you'll get a penciler who just doesn't want you to change anything, and they freak out at you, and, you know, like, they, like a lot of them just have this control thing, and they don't want anything kind of, like, uh, you know, getting in the way of, like, you know, their, their genius line work, and usually they're really bad collaborators. They're people you want to avoid, you know. A lot of them want you to almost do flat, like, you know, coloring style, just so, like, nothing, you know, is, you know, you're adding nothing that, you know, they, they didn't, you know, conceive but again the best uh, the best collaborations are you're both kind of adding to a piece you know again like you know it's some guys flip out but a lot of times like you know if I'm you know the pencil will come be oh yeah thank you for doing that I didn't even think about that you know that was thank you for you know fixing that for me or, or yeah that you know that makes a lot of sense so, or, now now I'm on the glows layer um, again like uh, glows are one of those things I see amateur colors screw up the most uh, again, it's kind of one of those things where uh, little goes a long way. So right now I'm just kind of adding some glows to like the highlights on this cape just to make it seem like that light's like especially hot and kind of like bouncing off it. And all I'm going through here and I'm kind of, you know, I'm going a bit more overboard at first and I can kind of tone it down. Uh, you know, like I, uh, one of the things like I use a different uh, mode for my brushes is I use a screen mode for glows. So like it's really easy to kind of overdo screen mode, which is kind of why I avoid it. Uh, for my like you know main kind of like uh, coloring but yeah when glows I mean like it really helps so now I'm kind of going back through and I'm kind of like toning down those glows so they're just not so distracting but yeah it's one of those things like you amateur colorists out there like you know definitely like you know it's kind of like with secondary light sources like it you know little it, it could become way too much really quick so you want to you know you want to you tone that down and watch it so yeah I'm, you know, I'm pretty much uh, done with the piece here just kind of tightening a couple things up Again, if, you know, if you like to like this video, you know, uh, comments, uh, hit me up on Twitter. If you've got any questions, I'll try to address them in a future video. But uh, thanks for watching. See you guys later.